I know I tend to stick with Ubuntu and Debian based distros, but happily in this video we've got something a little bit different because I'll be taking a look at Solus. Now Solus is not based on anything else, it is a distro that has been built up from scratch. So at the moment they're on version 1.2 and they've codenamed it Shannon. Now Solus is pretty damn quick. I've seen some little reviews that they've done, they're saying they're quite a bit faster than the likes of Ubuntu. Yeah, interesting. I did notice the speed improved as I allocated more CPU cores to the virtual machine. Yeah, that's a fair and reasonable assessment though. The more CPU cores you give it, the faster it goes, but that's not necessarily true in all cases. You can throw more CPU cores at something and it not necessarily make a huge amount of difference. It did in Solus, so that was quite good. So it's up to quad core here in this virtual machine. So it's quite a rapid system, seems to be fairly customizable on their own little desktop called Budgie. Uh, the only downside I've really noticed with it is that there's not a whole lot of applications available. Now, that's because they're using their own package manager. Uh, they're calling it um, EOPKG Manager. Let's take more of a look at it. So we'll start with taking a look at the Budgie desktop. So on the top left hand side you've got the application launcher. You've got the choice of either scrolling through the menus or searching for a particular application. So let's take for example LibreOffice Calc. What I find surprising with this search is it doesn't seem to come up with the most obvious results first. For instance, I was typing Writer there, and LibreOffice Writer is second. You can scroll across with the keyboard and launch applications that way. So while it seems to be a responsive enough searcher, it just doesn't seem to get the right results. The theming seems to be consistent throughout the distro, so that's quite nice to see. So going back to the features of the desktop, so I've got shortcuts to a few common programs. On the right hand side we have the network menu, and then a combined, if it wants to open, a combined notifications, calendar, settings and shutdown menu. Okay, so if we go across the settings there we can tweak some of the theming here. The final item now on the right hand side is just the time and if you right click you can bring up the time date settings and the calendar. And taking a look at some of the customizations we can do to the desktop, so you've got the easy tweak here of having a dark or a light theme. Change the widget themes, so we've got a few choices here. The icon theme. Cursor theme, well that's a KDE cursor. Shame I can't get any Plasma applications working on this distro though, simply because I can't find them in the software center. You can turn the desktop icons on or off. You can set some of the fonts that are used throughout the system. There's also some settings you can change on the panel. So you can change the position of the panel from top or bottom. And you can add additional panels. You can also tweak the size of it, so it's nice and easy to do. And that's how to set the layout of it. So that's simple and flexible enough. Might not be the most customizable desktop, but it's a good start. If I right click on the desktop, you've got the option of changing the background or going to the settings menu. Background, well, they've provided a few different backgrounds here, some artwork and some photographs. You can also use pictures from another folder or have a simple colored desktop. The lock screen, yep, yeah, same sort of customization we can do there. Across the settings menu, so what tweaks can we do here? The notifications, online accounts, add an online account. All oh, right, a few different online accounts you can add. Privacy, turn the screen lock on or off. That was something I turned off earlier. It's uh, while well, I'm running. It tends to bug me locking the screensaver if I move away from the computer for a few minutes. The system is pretty sparse in terms of pre-installed applications, so I went and installed a few things just to test it out. Well that's about your list under accessories. Internet, it comes with Firefox as the browser and Thunderbird for email client. There were no Office applications pre-installed. Sound and video had Rhythmbox for the music player and the VLC for the media player. Sundry, there's those couple of things there. There's a link to the different system settings and system tools. The hardware drivers failed to recognize the fact I was running in VirtualBox, which was a bit annoying then, because I had to 
go and install the drivers off the CD. Well, in order to do that, you need to compile the drivers from the VirtualBox guest editions. Not easy when you don't know what programs you need, because like in Ubuntu, it would be build essential. But I came across the instructions and um, that wasn't quite complete, that list. I did have to go to another page and find a few more items that I needed. But overall, it wasn't too difficult to get the drivers on here. So that's the default home page on the system. So links to a few different items about the project. The support page. Now in fairness to the support, I did just post on Google Plus and Twitter that uh, I noticed the system installer didn't have an option of adding a fully qualified domain name for the machine. And in fact, one of the project leaders got back to me and explained what I needed to do. Fair play to him. I didn't really ask it as a question, but he said as uh, the community pages, so I could get more help that way. Just something I like to do on these distros and trying to find out where they may break and uh, trying a fully qualified domain name for the system installer was where it, uh, well not broke, but it, it was missing that feature, which is rare. Just resizing the applications here and it only resizes two halves on the screen, there's no quadrant option here, or certainly not a quadrant option out of the box. And uh, moving the application up to the top of the screen resizes it to full screen. That's a fairly common behaviour now we see across different operating systems. There is no steep learning curve to use a budgie desktop. Well, my first time using it and I've got by perfectly fine. The last part we'll take a look at is the software centre. There's a real downside of the system that there's not many applications available here. Yes, you've got Steam. There's not many other games available as Linux packages. But if gaming's not your thing, well, I don't know. Do you like movies? How about Cody? Yeah, Cody's not on here. I did see a post on the forum that they were getting Cody ready to go on the system, so it's something we'll see at some point for Solus. You can do a partial search as well, and it seems to pick up the application, so yeah, Audacity and Audacious are available. I did have trouble with Plasma applications. Certainly Caden Live was missing. Krita. Amarok, yeah, nothing like that. So that's the only part I've really not been able to test as how Plasma applications work, but uh, certainly the GTK3 based applications work okay.